Oxford, a city with a remarkable biomedical campus. It's one of the largest in Europe, spread over two square miles. The campus is home to the Oxford Biomedical Research Centre and has benefited from an extraordinary construction programme. What we've tried to do is to try and ensure that we have the whole pathway from good basic science to clinical science all the way through to large-scale clinical trials and try and make them lined up coherently within the same campus. The Biomedical Research Centre achieves this by creating a partnership between clinicians from the Oxford Radcliffe Hospitals and academics from the University of Oxford. The Oxford Radcliffe Hospitals make up an acute teaching trust employing more than 10,000 people. And the university's medical sciences division is consistently ranked one of the top in the world and employs more than 2,500 researchers. We go from individual molecules to individual patients to whole populations and we can do it all within 50 metres of each other. There's nowhere else in the world, I think, that has, has that capability. At the southern tip of the campus is a building dedicated to tackling one of the country's key health challenges. This building is a purpose-built diabetes facility, uh, which is a partnership between the NHS, the University of Oxford and the pharmaceutical industry. More than 20,000 people are treated at Ockdem every year. The building also houses a clinical research area, with overnight facilities for patients taking part in trials and a dedicated DEXA scanner. The partnership's laboratories for diabetes and endocrine research are based here too. Whatever your role in this building, whether you're a clinician, whether you're a scientist, whether you're a researcher, you have to come through the patient waiting area. And in this way, you never forget why you're here. We're here for the patients. Ockdem also has the only purpose-built human islet isolation facility in the United Kingdom and supplies islets to centres throughout Europe. At the John Radcliffe site, BRC funding has recently enabled the university to set up a translational immunology lab that is directly embedded within the hospital building. Doctors with immunological questions about a particular patient can now get cutting-edge information from this new core lab. We are helping clinicians that are specialists in cancer, kidney diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, mitochondrial diseases, to understand the disease from an immunological point of view. Because the clinical facilities are right next to the core lab, samples are fresh when they arrive. The clinicians are not only able to access expert academic advice, but to draw upon state-of-the-art equipment as well. With the help of the BRC, we've um, purchased the LSR2, which is an 18-color flow cytometer, and an image stream, which combines a flow cytometry with microscopy. I think what the BRC is really showing is why we, we need to be here in the hospital with our techniques and knowledge to, to take this basic knowledge to the bedside. In the last five years, Oxford has invested more than £150 million in new cancer facilities, including creating a dedicated cancer centre. We've got a terrific setup for cancer research in Oxford. Because of the clinical setup we've got here, with a dedicated clinical research facility right in the middle of the cancer hospital and a lab next door to it to process patient samples, we can seamlessly offer patients state-of-the-art treatment through our research. The team is leading six early phase national portfolio trials. Because of the facilities we've got in Oxford, uh, we're able to attract industry. We're one of only two centres worldwide to have an agreement with AstraZeneca for full access to their small molecule drug pipeline for cancer research. The team's location is ideal. Just across the street is our green building, our translational research facility, where all the basic scientists are developing the new ideas that we can bring into the clinic. And next door to that, we've got the Wellcome Trust Centre for Human Genetics, which allows us to characterise our tumours and our patients' germline genetics in great detail and pick the right treatment for them. The Wellcome Trust Centre for Human Genetics in Oxford is one of the largest centres internationally studying the genetics of common human diseases. We have a very large DNA sequencing facility, one of the largest in universities in the UK. The facility has the ability to sequence the equivalent of 50 human genomes each month. In addition to the sequencing facility, uh, we have put a lot of effort into the statistical and bioinformatics skills needed to make sense of the huge amounts of data generated. And genetics research is not just confined to the Wellcome Trust Centre. In Oxford, it's becoming mainstream within clinical medicine. 
For example, genomics technologies are now being used within the NHS haematology labs and they're being applied within the NHS regional genetics labs too. Another role of the BRC is to work with modern pieces of medical and surgical equipment to evaluate their true potential for treating patients and to discover novel ways to deploy technology. Oxford was the first centre in Europe to use high-intensity ultrasound to treat liver and kidney cancers. It's basically an ultrasound machine which is 10,000 times the power of ordinary ultrasound and you get a burn at the focal length which is about 13 or 14 centimetres in from the surface without actually causing any damage as you go through the tissues. The same team is developing exciting new techniques for lung imaging. Oxford is just one of a handful of places worldwide with facilities to produce hyperpolarized xenon. Once the gas has been prepared, it'll be given to a patient in the MRI suite to inhale it and be scanned. We'll be able to actually, for the first time, map structure, lung function and perfusion data. This will open up a completely new area of research and potentially have very significant clinical implications. In the heart of the John Radcliffe Hospital is a cluster of buildings helping to maintain Oxford's world-leading position in imaging. Oxford Centre for Clinical Magnetic Resonance Research has two scanners, a 1.5 Tesla and a 3 Tesla. And in a dedicated building next door is the Oxford Centre for Functional MRI of the Brain, which has just benefited from an £8.2 million investment programme. We've uh, just recently installed a state-of-the-art new three-Tesla neuro-optimised uh, magnet, which has been selected both for its performance but also for its ability to allow us to do more patient and translational related research. It has a nice wide bore, it's very comfortable for the patients to be in. We can do lots of things with them when they're in there because we've got more space to interact with the subject. And FIMRIB is putting the finishing touches to the room that will soon house the centre's new seven-Tesla whole-body magnet, one of only two in the UK. We see the 7 Tesla as the platform that will enable us to take all the excitement that's come out of neuroimaging at a group level now really very aggressively into the individual patient. It's not just neuroimaging that is being revolutionised in Oxford. Cardiac and vascular imaging are being transformed too. Oxford's new heart centre offers outstanding clinical facilities alongside state-of-the-art cardiac cath labs and the partnership's cardiac clinical research facility. And the Acute Vascular Imaging Centre, or AVIC, is a brand new unit. It's highly unusual, as it's situated right between the emergency department and the heart centre. It's dedicated to clinical research in patients in the first minutes and hours of presentation with acute myocardial infarction and stroke. So the uniqueness of AVIC and the premise on which it's constructed is that we have an immediate adjacency of a cardiac cath lab with 3T state-of-the-art MRI scanner. And what this allows us to do is to get right into what's going on inside the artery, transfer the patient, evaluate the parenchymal injury in the brain or in the heart, and move the patient back again. We're really poised to understand disease heterogeneity in stroke and myocardial infarction in a way that really wasn't thought of before. Every day, patients visiting the Oxford Radcliffe NHS Trust are benefiting from research conducted right within the hospitals. There's perhaps a naive view that translation is just in one direction, from basic science through first-in-man studies to larger studies of uh, mortality and morbidity. In my experience, um, it's much more of a dialogue uh, where results from large-scale studies feed back into the basic science. In Oxford, both the expertise and the resources is probably second to none. I know that you will have only had an opportunity to capture a small fraction of the very extensive infrastructure and the activity that's going on in this Oxford Biomedical Research Campus. But I can assure you that there are activities going on here that will transform the nature of biomedicine, transform the treatment of patients for many years to come.